how can we enhance our knowledge about piano playing in the early 19th century? This has been one of the main questions in my study, where I have looked into what Viennese piano treatises recommend concerning basic keyboard technique. When I say technique here, I mean the physical aspects like the position of your body and the movements of your arms, hands and fingers when you play. I will refer especially to Friedrich Starke and Johann Nepomuk Hummel as representing a number of authors who published method books on piano playing in Vienna in the 1820s. As I discuss in my dissertation, the consensus among Viennese piano teachers around this time is striking. They agree that the basic technique is of the greatest importance and they also seem to have the same idea about what a good technique is. I have two main questions that could be formulated like this. How can we extract and apply the instructions on basic technique from the sources? And can such knowledge teach us anything about musical interpretation of the time? I have collected and combined instructions from several of the treatises. The, de the degree of detail vary, but there seems to be no contradictory information. The results I present here are based as closely as possible on the advice I have been able to read out of the sources. And inevitably, it also contains my own practical experience of these principles. For almost three years, I have used myself as a laborate, so to say in that I have adopted these instructions successively as I discovered them. Or perhaps I should say, as I discovered that I was actually not doing what the treatises instructed. Thus my approach became one of a double practical application. First of the technical recommendations to my own body, then of this technique to the music on the Viennese for the piano. So what are the elements in this technique that I have reconstructed from the sources? First of all, it's very important that you sit straight at the chair and your shoulders should not lean forward like this and your body should not lean forward like this, but you should be very straight and you should look at the music, not at the keys. That's the ideal. And also, um, you should sit so high that your hand, your arm will slope down towards the keyboard. And you see what I've done now is to just lift the arm uh, like this and maintaining the index finger as the highest point on my hand. Um, this is done in order that the elbow should stay close to the body. Even when you ascend like this, the, this askew position of the hand um, is a good combination with having your elbow like this. So the fingers always go first and you do not move your elbow more than necessary um, out from your body. So for instance, um, if you move your elbow here, it's very hard to maintain the correct position of the hand. And uh, that's an important point of this technique that you have to take all of the elements together. Also, the, when it comes to the movement of the fingers, they are supposed to move like this. Moving only the outer joint of the finger, like this. Now, you have to excuse my pinky a little bit because he hasn't gotten this yet. And also, if I happen to bend like that, um, that is not correct. Um, that if, if your fingers are not strong enough, they will, uh, they will break like that, but they're supposed to be like this. Yeah, so that's the movement of your fingers. I will now demonstrate some of the countless finger exercises that Hummel has included in his piano treatise. One of his basic principles is that the hand should be quiet in one position while the fingers work. And before each bundle of exercises, he indicates the correct position and the proper fingering. So before these exercises, the position is like this. And you should keep your hand quiet while playing that. So I will now play a few of those exercises.
this principle of keeping your hand in one position is also valid if you have a big stretch, for instance. In uh, figurations like this, you will keep your hand in a stretched out position, whom it specifically instructs while playing. Perhaps we should add a trill exercise too, just to be sure. Another element to notice is how fingering is directly related to how you position yourself at the instrument. For instance, this askew position of the hand makes it easy to play fingerings like this. And in fact, in one of Hummel's exercises, or his etudes rather, um, he makes an, a specific exercise out of keeping your hand tilted yet playing with supple fingers. You see that you move just very smoothly along the piano like this without changing the position of your hand. same in the left hand. In the next section we have some interesting fingerings. For instance this. And later finger with the same fingers. The following etude I've played for several years, and I used to play it like this. And so forth, struggling to find a tempo. Now, with the reconstructed technique, I keep the elbows close to the body and allow my hands to stay in a stretch out position much more. And it allows me to play it like this. Independency of finger movement and trills are the main elements.
this Schubert theme I remember playing like this. And it gets even harder. It actually is quite hard, but it can be made easier. For instance, if you don't jump back and forth with your arm all the time, but keep your elbow close to the body, it actually becomes much easier. There's less to move, and the distance becomes shorter if you, uh, if you keep the stretch more or less between the chords. In this Schubert Sonata in G major, I will show a few of the places where the reconstructed technique will make changes in the phrasing. For instance, big leaps become easier to execute because you keep your elbows close to the body and you move as little as possible. So you avoid moving the whole arm, for instance here. It is not hard to reach the high chord uh, because you have you keep your navigation system in the elbow, the na navigation point. Uh, if you move your whole arm, often some time is required between the chords, which changes the opportunities for phrasing. Also, um, there's a bass figure. That goes in the accompaniment for a long while. And this syncopated rhythm becomes easier because you stay very close in the keys. And uh, you move your fingers like this so that it's easier to repeat faster. And then notice the position of the right hand. And so 
forth. In the second movement, we have some of the same problems with distance and big chords. And we have also the need for a very controlled, soft attack in the bass. And with this attack, it actually gives you this control. And for accents and loud volume, you increase the speed of your finger. This is something that the piano treatises talk about as Schnellkraft, indicating that the faster the attack, the faster the attack, the louder the note. 